Ladies and gentlemen, to begin our program, please welcome to the stage our 50th anniversary gala chairman, the Honorable Donald Rumsfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, please have a seat. Good evening, and welcome to the 50th anniversary gala of the Fund for American Studies. Roger, thank you for all you do for this fine organization, but also thank you for inviting Justice Gorsuch to lunch today. His remarks were memorable. Thank you. The Honorary Host Committee and I salute and with respect the Fund for American Studies and its one half century of advancing the cause of liberty. And our thanks to each of you here this evening for your support of a truly important organization and particularly my thanks to the sponsors of tonight's gathering. A special thank you to the platinum sponsor, the J.P. Humphreys Foundation. And my thanks to the gold sponsors, the Klein Family Sellers, the DeJoy, well, we, they, I think they bought more than one or two or three tables. That's, that's good. The DeJoy Foss Family Foundation, Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Philip N. Friedman, the Charles Cope Foundation, Ken and Freda Levy, Mr. Robert Luddy, the National Federation of Independent Business, and the John William Pope Foundation. Thank you so much to those gold sponsors. When TFAS was founded some 50 years ago, our country was engaged in a great geopolitical struggle against the ideology of communism. I remember those days well. I was uh, in the Congress in my third term, and it was a, a battle, a struggle. People took different sides, but it was an important struggle and one well fought. The future of our great nation depends on assuring that there are young leaders prepared to defend and promote our free society. And of course, that's why everyone is here this evening, because we're supporters of TFAS. I want to congratulate Roger Ream and thank you for your leadership. Um, my thanks to each of you here this evening for helping to build this truly remarkable organization. Tonight, as we celebrate TFAS on its golden anniversary, it's right that each of us rededicate ourselves to the cause of human liberty. Now, please join me in welcoming to the stage the members of the Honorary Gala Host Committee. These are truly distinguished individuals, and I hope they'll come up, and I'll thank you all in person. Thank you. The Fund for American Studies thanks the Honorary Host Committee for tonight's gala. Mr. Daniel Henninger. Ms. Catherine Mangu Ward. Mrs. Geraldine Novak. Senator Rand Paul. Congressman David Rouser. General Edward L. Rowney. Mrs. Suzanne Schulte. 
Congressman Adrian Smith. Governor Don Sundquist. Mrs. Mara Dixnitz. And now, please rise for the National Anthem by TFAS Regent and four-time international whistling champion, Chris Allman. Please be seated and turn your attention to the video monitors for a brief presentation. Governor Edison of New Jersey, William F. Buckley, member of Congress, Walter Judd, a fellow by the name of David Jones, came together to bring the best and the brightest from universities throughout the entire country to Washington. It was their expectation that uh, political freedom, economic freedom, uh, would come out in comparison to other forms of government. Between 1967 and 1970, those three years, it really did take time, effort, and the search for financial resources to be able to bring this program together. And then we grew an institute on political journalism and expanded what we do with young journalists. When the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, we created a program in Prague that brought together the students from throughout Central and Eastern Europe. And out of that grew the program in Greece for the Middle East. But then we went to Asia and Latin America to do similar programs over there. So they continue to grow one out of the other, but responding to different regional needs. 2013, we moved our academic partnership from Georgetown University to George Mason University. Uh, we work closely there with the economics department, a world-renowned economics department. My colleagues at George Mason are libertarian-type economists. They believe in limited government and, uh, and personal liberty, and I think that this is very, very consistent with the agenda of the uh, Fund for American Studies. I've been involved in IPJ and TFAS for uh, some decades, and it's, it's gotten a lot bigger. It's gotten a lot more important. It's gotten a lot more influential. 
and that's because it's had leadership that has seen the need and responded to it. I think the founders would be proud of the organization because while we've managed to grow and expand, we've stayed true to the mission that they created, and we've never wavered from that. But they would be, I think they would be wowed and impressed that we have alumni in all 50 states and 120 foreign countries, and that we have prominent leaders um, who are TFAS alumni. Please welcome to the stage, Karen Jones Whalen, the daughter of TFAS founder, David R. Jones. Please bow your head for the invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to gather tonight and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Fund for American Studies. Lord, we want to thank you for the vision and perseverance of the five founders, Charles Edison, Marvin Liebman, Dr. Walter Judd, William Buckley, and my father, David Jones. The fund was formed based on principles of freedom, individual responsibility, and free markets. Henry Weaver wrote in his book, The Mainspring of Human Progress, there must be opportunities and incentives to invent, opportunities and incentives to use, and in between there must be opportunities and incentives to produce and exchange. Lord, you have blessed us with a great nation, a nation who because of individual freedom has in just a mere 20, 200 years advanced further than any other nation in all the preceding ages. We ask that you provide wisdom, knowledge, health, and safety to our president and to all those who govern us. We also ask that you bless those at the fund that continue to teach and defend the values of freedom, individual responsibility, and free markets, the teachers, administration, and board members. Guide them and give them wisdom and discernment. Weaver also wrote, looking to the future instead of the past, America's progress in the years ahead depends on the American thinking of today. The long-range prospects depend not on us older folks, but on the thinking of the younger people who will be at the helm 10 years, 20 years, 30, 40, 50 years hence. With that in mind, we also want to lift up the thousands of students who have attended the institutes, fellowships, and seminars. Guide them in making a difference in their communities and throughout the world, and raise up leaders for the next 50 years. Lastly, Lord, we want to thank you for those who faithfully bless us with generous donations of time, talent, and money. We pray a special blessing for each of these individuals because we know we could not continue the work without them. God, thank you again for this wonderful evening as we look back over the last 50 years and look forward to the next 50. Amen. And now, please welcome to the stage the chairman of the board of the Fund for American Studies, Randall Teague. This evening. Such a tribute to David Jones, to Roger Reeve, his heir as the president of the fund, and to the many trustees, regents, students, faculty, administrators, awards judges, everyone that has brought this organization together with vision, given it leadership, given it hopes and aspirations for, as you saw, 17,000 students since the funding founding in 1967 and the first institute in 1970. I would like for you to give a resounding applause to all of those persons.
I'm not accustomed to brief remarks because as an attorney, I'm paid by the hour. But Roger assures me that if I don't give brief remarks before your dinner, they're going to run this teleprompter at 500 words a minute. So I will try to capture as best I can in the 50 years of this organization uh, in a few uh, moments. Uh, like some others of you here this evening, I was present at the creation, to use David Atchison's word, uh, when this organization saw a need to come about in 1967. And many of you are here this evening who were there then. And the thing that gives me such hope, such gives me joy, such gives me such optimism in the medical age that we confront and experience today, many of you here tonight will be here when we celebrate the 100th anniversary of this organization. That's a remarkable thing to observe, isn't it? It's also a remarkable thing to observe that I will not be one of you. <laughs> it's a wonderful time that we celebrate tonight. It's a wonderful and deeply emotional experience that some of us are having starting last night through the programs today, through this evening. David Jones was the energy that brought together this organization. He saw during 1965, 1966, 1967, the tremendous need for an organization that could bring university students from throughout the United States together for a summer program of comparative political and economic systems, which came about because of the work of Lev Dobriansky and others at Georgetown University. Since that first year, our programs have grown and grown dramatically, and Roger will address that in his remarks later this evening. But he laid the foundations for the four others who were involved in that that you saw on the screen that assured the survivability of this organization and its capacity to exist, not for years, but for decades, and to deliver the highest quality education in comparative political and economic systems to students, not only throughout the United States, but as you also heard in that presentation, to over 140 countries around the world as we deliver those programs today in Europe and South America uh, and in Asia. So we come together this evening recognizing that we have a responsibility to try consciously and ethically to bring about the true meaning of the words that seem to be only words for others about freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of the press, that we know that it is critically important in a free society that those three freedoms be most protected above all others, even though they may be combined with those other freedoms in the Bill of Rights and otherwise that comes from our Judeo-Christian and our Anglo-Saxon heritage. So that is what the Fund for American Studies does. It is why we are here this evening. It is why we expect you, we hope that you will be with us in the journey that will take us through the next 50 years. Thank you very much. And now, a brief video message from TFAS Friends. Congratulations to the Fund for American Studies on 50 years of educating students on leadership and founding principles. Your alumni are making a difference in communities around the world for the cause of freedom. Happy 50th anniversary to the Fund for American Studies. I am grateful to have attended two of the Fund's programs when I was a student at North Carolina State University. 
Thanks to my experience in the Institute on Business and Government Affairs in Washington, D.C., and the Institute on Political and Economic Systems in Prague, the Czech Republic, I gained a much better understanding and appreciation for the principles that made America great. The United States is the greatest force for liberty that the world has ever known, and it is why these principles deserve to survive. A special thank you to the Fund for American Studies for providing invaluable opportunities for the future leaders of our country to learn the fundamental principles of a free society and for inspiring them to get involved in our nation's political process. The freedom that our founding fathers secured for us is not automatically passed on to the next generation. It's something that we ourselves have to fight for every single day. We have an obligation to make sure this country remains free. And we can best do that by teaching our kids a love for American democracy and free enterprise. Thank you to the Fund for American Studies for the important work you do in promoting freedom. And congratulations on your 50th anniversary. It's been my privilege to work with the Fund for American Studies for the last several years. They're one of the great conservative groups in D.C. fighting for liberty. They're one of the groups that hasn't forgotten what Ronald Reagan said when he said the government is the problem, not the solution. Fund for American Studies does a lot of great things, but one of the things that I've been most involved with is bringing great uh, speakers in favor of liberty to Capitol Hill to let the leaders of the next generation hear these great ideas. I think Fund for American Studies is a great group and I hope you'll support them. Ladies and gentlemen, as you continue to enjoy dessert, please, at this time, turn your attention to the stage and welcome TIFAS supporter, Freda Levy. to be toasting the Fund for Americans, for, the Fund for American Studies, and I want to toast them for accomplishing something we all wish we could accomplish in our family, with our own families. And to make that point, I'm going to read you an email, is this echo? I'm going to read you an email from a Fund for American Studies program alum. And this woman writes, it was a life-changing, it was life-changing in terms of how I think of freedom in the U.S. Before participating in the program, this person said she took her freedoms for granted, even though she was raised in a home where she was taught about liberty. And she goes on to say her time in Prague, she learned about communism, and because of that, it brought freedom home in a way that being the lesson she learned at home just never could. That email is from Roger Reams' daughter. And I took, I took great solace in this because I thought, Roger certainly knows about freedom and he certainly knows about educating students about freedom. And even he needed the Fund for American Studies to help his children fully understand the importance of freedom. But it's not just with those who have been raised in the Liberty homes that learn about freedom through TFAS. This is an email from a young student who she says she was a young Democrat and she had done Democrat politics in Austin. And she claims, she, she says, you know, she was born, she was raised in a divided household. And by this she means her mother was liberal and her father was a socialist. Uh, but she said the courses at the Fund for American Studies were so reasonable and so well done that Tia Tifas, in her words, flipped her to a freedom lover. So I want to toast the Fund for American Studies for carrying out a mission that our founding fathers implored us to do. As George Washington wrote in 1785, the best means of forming a manly, remember 1785, the best means of forming a manly, virtuous, and happy people will be found in the right education 
of youth. Without this foundation, every other means, in my opinion, must fail. To the Fund for American Studies for doing for us and future generations what our founding fathers did for us, and that is assure that we live in a free and prosperous society. To Fund for American Studies. And now, a special video message from New York City. Good evening, everyone. I'm David Muir here at ABC's World News Tonight, and congratulations to the Fund for American Studies on your 50th anniversary. I was hoping to be there, but as you might have noticed, these are not slow times in the news. I still remember very well my time at the Fund for American Studies, the Institute on Political Journalism, and the summer I spent in Washington. And every time I come back to D.C. to anchor the news from our nation's capital, and it's been often lately, I always think of what drew me there as an aspiring journalist, that program. They used to say, and perhaps you still do, live, learn, and intern, still have my trusty brochure, with the promise of opportunity and critical thinking. And the program delivered, studying economics, ethics, interning in the government. And I remember being the student speaker, introducing then ABC News White House correspondent Britt Hume with a simple wish at the time, to one day join ABC News. And here we are today. What a whirlwind 2016 campaign and election, moderating the debates, interviewing Secretary Clinton the night she made history, securing the nomination, interviewing President Trump in the first interview he gave in the White House. And you should know that I walk into every one of those moments with one central purpose, to ask what Americans, what voters, what our viewers at home want us to ask. And to remember, we are reporting to a divided America and to a diverse America. And everyone watching us, I hope, knows that we're asking those questions for them. Back at the fund, I remember the spirited debate, the conversations we had in class, and with the friends I made back then, friends I still connect with today. And at the end of that summer, the respect we had for one another. I hope for more of that today, because I believe we actually have more in common in these times than many give us credit for. And I salute the Fund for American Studies for continuing that conversation, the embracing of ideas, the challenging of conventional wisdom, and above all, instilling a respect for differing opinions. Roger, you and your team should be proud, I am, to have been a small part of it all, and keep challenging those young minds, because we need them more than ever. Congratulations. Please welcome TIFAS trustee and former Under Secretary of State, Paula Dobriansky. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The founders and early leaders of the Fund for American Studies were all fierce crusaders against communism. I grew up among them, as my father, Ambassador Lev Dobriansky, was a major foe of communism, he was also the founding director of the Fund's first institute, the Compa Institute on Comparative Political and Economic Systems. The Fund for American Studies founder, Dr. Walter H. Judd, was one of the 20th century's most influential members of Congress on foreign affairs, and he also was an advisor to presidents from Truman to Reagan. A fiery and very eloquent orator, Dr. Judd spoke every summer to TFAS students well into his 90s, warning students that it was up to them to complete the unfinished American experiment in liberty. Each year, the Fund for American Studies honors Dr. Judd and his principles by presenting the Walter Judd Freedom Award. This award recognizes those individuals who have advanced the cause of freedom in the United States and abroad who are devoted to the preservation and expansion of freedom, and who are influential in world and national affairs. I can think of no one more worthy of this award than my dear friend Gary Kasparov, 
a pro-democracy activist on the world stage who has courageously spoken out time and again against authoritarianism in his native Russia. In his writings and his speeches, he illustrates the sharp contrast between communism, which weakens individualism and personal responsibility, and democracy and free markets, which encourage human flourishing. He warns against the trap of moral relativism and the danger of increased state power. And he inspires us to be forceful and consistent in supporting freedom, free markets, and free trade. At the age of 22, he became the youngest ever undisputed world chess champion and held a number one world ranking for 20 years. Yes, 20 years. After retiring from chess in 2005, he joined the opposition to Putin and suffered arrests, harassment, beatings, and jail time. When I was Under Secretary of State, I was very privileged when I visited Moscow to have the chance to meet with him and to solicit his advice and his analysis of the situation. Well, in 2013, he chose not to return to Russia explaining that he, quote, refuses to be an easy target or be caged and limited to being little more than a figure of sympathy, unquote. His crusade to build a Russia where everyone is free to live and speak without fear and to prosper is a noble and important one. A free and democratic Russia is critical to having a stable geopolitical situation. So tonight, on behalf of the trustees of the Fund for American Studies, I am truly proud and honored to present Garry Kasparov with the 2017 Walter Judd Freedom Award. Garry, please come forward. Thank you, Paula. I would first like to congratulate you and everyone at the Fund for American Studies for this event and for your remarkable work in promoting the cause of freedom. Young people who are born in America, who are born in freedom, often fail to value these blessings. And your programs and events are so important to ensuring that this isn't the case. My deep thanks to the Fund for American Studies for this honor. If only my diehard communist grandfather could see me now. <laughs> to receive an award bearing the name of staunch anti-communist Walter Judd, who received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Ronald Reagan, it's truly the honor of a lifetime for someone like me, who became what you might call a Reagan communist, in the Soviet Union in the early 80s. I have many trophies in my cabinets, but none could mean more to me than one that has the word freedom on it. So thank you again. It is a time of great division in American and global politics today and people are nervous about partisan or ideological speeches. But I'm afraid it is against my nature to avoid it. However, 
my partisanship is not about one party versus another. No. My bias is free over unfree. My politics are democracy over dictatorship. My ideology My ideology is individual liberty over government authority. And I have no interest in the moral relativism of anyone who disputes these distinctions. If you want to defend Putin, do it from Moscow, not from Washington. If you want to defend socialism, do it from Caracas, not from Harvard. <laughs> Certainly, Walter Judd understood that good and evil were not a matter for partisan debate. His passionate anti-communism anti was not McCarthy's political theater. It reflected Judd's deep commitment to individual freedom abroad as well as at home. Jad was horrified by the fact that there were nearly a billion people living under authoritarian and totalitarian regimes around the world. No doubt, he would be even more horrified that the number today is far higher. Despite the collapse of the Soviet Union, the evil empire over 25 years ago. I believe that this is not a coincidence. When the Cold War ended in victory for America and the free world, and the Iron Curtain fell, rescuing me and millions more from totalitarian communism, the West fell asleep. Exhausted after 45 years of battling an existential threat on multiple fronts at huge cost, it was time to take a break. With the great enemy defeated, it was easy to lose focus. China always Walter Judd's passion, was still completely unfree. But China was happy to do business with America if the West would leave its brutal regime in peace. And America was increasingly content to drop human rights and freedom from the business plan. In 1992, a baby boomer became president and it was time to party. Well, the party is over. Many here tonight might prefer not to talk about foreign policy at all. The global freedom agenda that once united Democrats like Scoop Jackson and John F. Kennedy with Republicans like Walter Judd and Ronald Reagan is barely represented in American politics today. And this is a tragedy, one whose consequences we're only starting to see realized. This is critical because you cannot promote freedom abroad without a deep belief in freedom at home. And you have, if you have pa that passion for freedom at home, you cannot help but believe that every man, woman, and child deserves that freedom too, even if they were born in China, North Korea, Russia, Zimbabwe, or Venezuela. American leadership is required to make that happen, and the best way to do that is by leading by example. America must again turn to what Walter Judd called America's strongest weapons in his famous Chicago Republican Convention keynote in 1960. Quote, the values and virtues of a system of government which has given freedom and dignity and better living standards to human beings than any other system ever has. He added, we must develop a strategy for victory. And so they did. And 29 years later, in 1989, the Berlin Wall fell to that strategy. But evil does not die, and today we again require a strategy for victory. Yet today, right here in the United States, the proverbial land of the free, the shining city on a hill, that shone so brightly to those of us in the unfree world, many want to turn away from the world and turn away from liberty here as well. More regulations, more restrictions, more redistribution, 
more government involvement in education, in healthcare, and business, and social issues. It's enough to make you wonder if the Soviets might still have a chance in the Cold War. Different elements of these agendas are coming from different places. Nationalism that attacks globalism, immigration, and free trade on one side. Socialism that attacks free markets, free thought, and American exceptionalism on the other. In other words, attacking everything that made America great. And both groups seem to favor free speech only when that speech favors them. From conservative speakers attacked on college campuses to football players criticized for protesting. Defending only speech that suits you isn't really free speech at all. Most worryingly, both sides turn to the government for help. Ban this, stop that, promote this group, subsidize that one. No, 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 no. As Walter Judd said again in 1960, quote, many regard the Constitution as the means by which the government regulates the people. No. It is the magnificent means our forefathers devised by which the people can regulate their government. <laughs> Rights are not what our government must do for us. Rights are what our government cannot do to us. <laughs> I'm not a religious man, but amen. The good news is that so far, the populist radicals on both sides seem quite incompetent. The bad news is that this means there is a huge opportunity for more capable, more charismatic leaders to have even more success with these bad ideas in the future. I have spent well over a decade warning about the threat of Vladimir Putin, and unfortunately, my warnings were not heeded. So I will conclude with another set of warnings today, and I hope for better results. These warnings are based on my life experience in two dictatorships, in totalitarian USSR and the modern one-man dictatorship of Vladimir Putin, and my life experience in the rise and fall of the Russian democracy in the 90s, and my current life here in America, for which I am forever grateful. One, power given to the government is never returned without a fight. And it will be used in ways you cannot control and cannot expect. If you support conceding rights and giving authority to the government, when the people or party you favor is in charge, you are part of the problem. <laughs> Two, talking about socialism in America, is a luxury paid for by the successes of capitalism. The record is clear. Free markets and free people create prosperity, while government control of resources and citizens create poverty. Economic inequality is a serious issue, yes maybe even the most important in the world one today. But trust me, you are far better off with the failures of capitalism than with the successes of socialism. <laughs> My third and, and final warning is really a call to action for all of you here, a call not to follow, but to lead. Those who want America to be more like Scandinavia forget to ask, who will then be America's America? Who will take risks? Who will innovate? And who will sacrifice for the prosperity and stability of the entire free world against its many enemies? No. America must lead because there is no one else. And America must be led by those who truly believe in American values, in American leadership, and the American future. 
And that, that is the only strategy for victory. Thank you. Please welcome the Executive Director of the Hungary Initiative Foundation, Anna Smith Lacey, and Editor in Chief of the Weekly Standard, Stephen F. Hayes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's not easy to go after such words as Gary Kasparov has uttered. You do meet a lot of foreigners who sometimes feel more American than Americans themselves. But it's truly an honor to be here as an alumna of the Fund for American Studies. I'm an alumna of the Prague program as well as the Washington program. And I'm also an alumna of the Public Policy Fellows program. I had the true pleasure of hosting at the Hungarian Embassy where I used to work uh, TFAS fellows and mentoring many, many of TFAS students. And it's a true honor to be on the stage after the Eagle Scout of Eagle Scouts, Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> I don't just believe in the mission of TFAS, but I believe in the sincerity, the character, and the professionalism of its staff. It takes freedom-loving individuals to run a program for 50 years. And very, very few programs, very, very few educational programs have not been derailed and have been stuck to their mission and have been as successful as the Fund for American Studies have been, both domestically and internationally. As a native of Hungary, I was born and raised in Budapest, a country that suffered under communism for 50 years. I'm very, very sensitive in situations where I meet people, college students, millennials of my age, who try to convince me of the great virtues of the socialist Marxist economic system and try to convince me that it was a great system. It was just never really well executed. Well, it was tried and tested about 30, 40 countries around the world, and it ended up with 100 million victims. So I think we're good with testing so far. <laughs> but when a significant chunk of millennials think today in America, and around the world, unfortunately, that socialism is a better system of government than the free market system, when they think that George W. Bush killed more people than Stalin, then we, NATO ally countries, have a problem as well. We have a problem and America has a problem, but it's also a call for action. It's a call for action that TFAS has answered and I'm very glad that TFAS has answered it, not just in America, but around the globe as well, and that I could be a part of it. So I, I have a real special appreciation for TFAS's efforts to promote freedom and liberty and the responsibility that comes with it. It's a true privilege that very few countries around the world actually appreciate, understand, and enjoy. 165 years ago, Lajos Kossuth, the Hungarian governor of the first free Hungarian Republic and of the 1848 revolution, which failed, came to America and was hosted by members of Congress. And he said, and we're talking about a patriot, a true Hungarian patriot. He said, by the glorious example of your freedom, your welfare, and your security, mankind can become conscious of its aims. The lesson you give to humanity will not be lost. And this is the lesson that TFES teaches through program after program after program to foreigners around the world, because the cause of America, to a great measure, is the cause of all mankind, and I truly believe in that. 
American exceptionalism is not against any other nation. It is for every other nation's freedom. <laughs> TFES has inspired me to pursue a career fostering democracy, freedom, and human rights, and played a pivotal role in my life as well. Just like in the lives of 17,000 alumni that TFAS has today, who are here to celebrate with us this milestone. And I would like to ask all of the alumni in attendance, more than 150 of them, of us actually, to stand now to be recognized. Thank you very much, Anna. Um, I also attended a TFAS program in Prague in the Czech Republic and then had the privilege of working as director of the Fund for American Studies Institute on Political Journalism. And that experience, without question, helped steer me into a career in journalism. Now, when I write for the Weekly Standard or appear on Fox News, I'm always cognizant of the important lessons that the fund has taught me. First, that a journalist must adhere to the highest ethical standards and get the facts right. <clears throat> and get the facts right, even if it means missing a potential scoop. And second, that every story, and I mean every story, has an economic angle. At the Institute on Political Journalism, where I worked for five years for Roger Ream, we teach aspiring journalists ethics, sort of foundational, classical ethics, and economics. And the presumption is that journalists are deficient in both. I don't hear many arguments tonight, and that's not fake news. Reporters need to understand economics and apply sound economic reasoning. Someone who's always reinforced these lessons is my mentor and my role model, Fred Barnes, who works with me at the Weekly Standard. I met Fred through my experiences at the Fund for American Studies. I harassed Fred for a job at the Weekly Standard while I was working at the Fund for American Studies. And I want to thank Fred and also Roger Ream for everything that they've done to inspire me and so many others in the TFAS family for more than 25 years. My experience at the Fund for American Studies is a unique one. Uh, I worked at the Fund for American Studies, so I've seen the importance of the work at a staff level. I was a student at the Fund for American Studies, so I understand just how much the students derive from the programs as they attend the seminars and the classes, and take the internships and listen to the lectures through the Fund for American Studies. And now I serve on the Board of Trustees at the Fund and I see it from an entirely different level. We're also an intern sponsor at the Weekly Standard. So I've seen the work of the Fund for American Studies from every conceivable angle. And 50 years on, the number of students, the number of young people that the Fund for American Studies has inspired, the number of lives that have been changed through the work of the Fund for American Studies is truly extraordinary. And when you think about the work of the Fund, the 17,000 students who have come through the programs and how, many's, how many others' lives they've influenced and how many lives beyond that they've influenced, it is truly mind-boggling to think of the work of the fund over the past 15 years and the impact that the fund has had, not just here in America, but as Anna says, overseas. So an honor to be with you tonight, an honor to be on the stage uh, after Gary. One of the, the most significant things I've done in my short time as editor-in-chief of the Weekly Standard is get Gary Kasparov to appear in our pages 
as a published author, it was an extraordinary speech and a call to action. I appreciate everything you said tonight. Thank you, Gary. Now I invite you to turn your attention to the video screens here to see and hear the stories of how the Fund for American Studies has affected and influenced the lives of some of our fellow Fund for American Studies alumni. Remember, you've touched the lives of these leaders through your generous support of TFAST programs, and we hope you'll continue to support in the future. Thank you very much. This generation and the next generation, they are going to lead our country, not just politically, but economically. They're going to be the CEOs of organizations. They're going to be journalists. They're going to be movers and shakers. And TFAST is helping make that happen. This program has been transformational for me. I was an undergraduate at the University of Oklahoma. I came out here for a State Department internship. It changed my life. We're teaching them things that they don't get in most college courses on most college campuses and things that are going to allow them to excel in business or the news media or in academia and then to excel because they understand the principles of freedom, free enterprise, free markets and the importance of protecting those here and promoting them overseas. The Fund for American Studies was one of those new life experiences for me, uh, particularly uh, the, my participation in, in the program over in Prague. When you're interacting with students who uh, grew up under tyranny, listen to their stories, uh, li listen to their dreams and desires to have the opportunities that we have in America. And so it didn't take me too long to figure out that what we have here is a very, very special uh, place. TFAS's role in developing a team of young conservative leaders is absolutely critical for the future of all the ideas we believe in. To promote the free society depends on individuals who really understand what the free society is all about, what the principles are that undergird it. And that's why it's so important. That's why I've been such a supporter of TFAS for as many years as I have. I think one of the great benefits of TFAS is the fact that it really opens up a new world for students and I think connects them with leaders in their genre or particular subject matter that can really help propel the careers going forward. My internship here is with Radio America, so I'm getting tons of journalism experience, both in front of the camera, behind the microphone, writing, everything, and so I'm definitely going to be able to carry that over into a career. I look at the, the quality of these young kids and how enthusiastic they are, and it makes me feel better about uh, the, the future of our country. As long as I'm breathing, I'm going to be associated with the fund. Um, I, I hope to, to add wisdom to some of these young folks that I have an opportunity to meet with. TFAS programs are important because they are educating citizens uh, and citizens for the future of peace people will be influential and it's important that they understand the responsibilities that they have as leaders we believe that we can make a difference and then the students that we teach will also make a difference that's all we can hope for is it stays with them and you don't know how the seed is going to germinate in the future but you know it does it's awesome we have a lot to be proud of over the past 50 years uh, we have developed young people who are truly making a difference in the world. But as we look to the future, we're committed to mobilizing them on behalf of our mission as we go forward. Please welcome the President and CEO of the Fund for American Studies, Roger Reem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming tonight to celebrate our 50 years of teaching freedom. Thank you also to Gary Kasparov 
for accepting our Walter Judd Freedom Award and for sharing the insights that come from your deep thinking. I recommend his book, if you haven't read it, his latest is Deep Thinking. Uh, it's a fascinating account of both chess and technology and artificial intelligence, so go buy that and read it. When we present our Walter Judd Freedom Award, I recall Lee Edwards, who's with us tonight, his superb biography of Dr. Judd, the title of which was Missionary of Freedom. That title not only describes the life of one of our founders, it captures our mission at the Fund for American Studies. We are missionaries for freedom. Like most missionaries, we don't just preach to the choir. Rather, we take our message of freedom directly to young people who will be the leaders of tomorrow. We are missionaries of freedom, and so we must be. Beginnings are special. The founding of the Fund for American Studies certainly was. The wise men who came together in 1969, David Jones and others, imprinted on this organization in our very DNA a vision that set our course and has brought us here this evening. That vision is a world where leaders understand the simple yet profound ideas that men and women were born to be free. The responsibility of an honorable leader is to protect our God-given rights to shape our own destinies as we choose. Left mostly free, Americans have built the greatest and most prosperous nation in human history. With freedom, Americans have been able to take risks, explore, innovate, invent, fail, and succeed. It is a marvelous story of wealth creation and human flourishing. In the past century alone, per capita income in the United States has risen fivefold, and we've eradicated dreadful diseases We've extended life expectancy by decades, reduced infant mortality to a fraction of what it was. We've liberated ourselves from time-consuming household chores, and we've led the world in virtually every field of economic endeavor, agriculture, mining, manufacturing, telecommunications, entertainment, medical technology, and to technology in general. And we did all this while welcoming millions of people to our shores. We indeed have a rich inheritance to protect. As President John F. Kennedy wrote in a speech he was never to deliver in Dallas, Texas in 1963, we in this country, in this generation, are by destiny rather than by choice the watchmen on the walls of world freedom. Destiny does indeed require of us to keep alive the American experiment and liberty. Freedom and free enterprise are threatened as never before by an ever-growing government and by a very dangerous cultural divide. We clash now over the most basic values we once shared. Self-reliance, the rule of law, economic freedom, and even freedom of speech and of association. If we truly want our republic to survive, we must return to the principles that animated the American founding and that can unite us as Americans. That is why the work of the Fund for American Studies is so vital. At TFES, we provide a place for young people of all backgrounds and beliefs to come together to discuss ideas, to debate the proper role of government, and to reach common understanding. We challenge them just as we challenge the progressive orthodoxy taught at most American universities. What we call the TFAS journey is a combination of academic courses in, in economics and government, real-world experience gained through internships, and face-to-face -face interaction with leaders and mentors who can serve as role models for a lifetime. That is where the TFAS journey begins for each student. It culminates with our graduates moving into careers as part of an engaged and active TFAS alumni network ready to make the difference in the world 
advancing freedom, promoting justice, and spreading opportunity. The evidence of this, the transformational impact of T the TFAST journey is clear. We produce leaders such as those you've heard tonight and many others working around the world, including Arizona Supreme Court Justice Clint Bullock, co-founder of the Institute for Justice. Clint has devoted his career to fighting for the economic liberties of the least among us. Tim Carney, who was a Robert Novak Journalism Fellow and turned his fellowship project into a career opposing crony capitalism and working for the Washington Examiner and the American Enterprise Institute. Lori Windham, who's fighting for religious liberty as senior counsel at the Beckett Fund. Internationally, we've got young people such as Jacek Spendel, who's reviving the spirit of liberty among young people in Poland. Carlos Meccano, who's fighting un for, with unimaginable courage in Venezuela for freedom. And Arpita Nepal, standing up to Maoists and Kathmandu at the Samriti Prosperity Foundation. The list of TFAS graduates who are making a difference because of their TFAS journey is a long one. We produce many, many more than those I've mentioned and those you've heard from tonight. And we do this every summer, every spring, every fall, and throughout the world. I'm pleased to announce tonight that we are building on our impressive record of accomplishment to meet new challenges. The Fund for American Studies will continue to be the premier incubator of talent that can lead our country toward, and the world, toward freedom. We will accelerate our work for liberty by creating the TFAS Honors Scholarship Program to expand our recruitment of young people who will be game changers in public policy, politics, journalism, and other professions of influence. This scholarship program will be used to recruit the best and brightest into our Live, Learn, Intern program. Building on the work of our affiliate, the Foundation for Teaching Economics, we will reach more young people at an earlier age by developing the Early Economic Education Initiative to significantly increase the number of high school students and teachers we reach. And the TFAS Leadership Engagement Program will mobilize and significantly increase the impact of our 17,000 TFAS alums and 12,000 FTE graduates. Please join us as together we make a commi renewed commitment to raising to the rising generation. Please support our work. Thank you everyone who's made the first 50 years of this journey a success and to all who made this evening possible. I want to give special thanks to Sarah Atkins, Ethel May Humphreys and the J.P. Humphreys Foundation for your generous support as our platinum sponsors. Thank you to Chairman Rumsfeld, David Muir, Steve Hayes, Anna Smith Lacey. Thank you to the First Lady of Freedom, Freda Levy, for that wonderful toast. Special thanks to our indispensable chairman, Randy Teague, and our board members, past and present, who push us every day. And special thanks also to my teammates at the Fund for American Studies, Jane Mack for or organizing this, and Carrie DiNardo. Our new journey begins now with a song from my TFAS classmate in the summer of 76, Mark Stansberry and his wife Nancy, followed by music and dancing. Thank you very much. Thanks, Roger. Please join us in God Bless America. God bless America, the land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with fall. Stand 
beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you. Thank you for coming. God bless you all. Please join us for music and dancing.